Welcome to Sounding Board, a production of Seroptimist International of Novato, whose mission it is to improve the lives of women and girls through programs leading to economic and social empowerment. I'm Freda Kaplan, and my guest today is Linda Tavasi, the CEO of Marin Community Clinics. Welcome, Linda. Thank you, Freda. It's a pleasure to see you and a pleasure to be here. The Marin Community Clinics provide quality health care for all, and we'd like to talk about what that means today. Well, thank you for the opportunity. The Marin Community Clinics serve 35,000 patients, all from Marin County, all from various walks of life, all with a variety of health problems, as any group of 35,000 people would have. Half of our 35,000 people are children. So we have a robust pediatric program that takes care of the children from birth through adolescence, and then they become part of our adult clinic. We have a variety of services in multiple locations, um, nine to be exact. We have two clinics in Novato. We are opening a new clinic this very week in Novato, adjacent to the one we already have. But between the two buildings, they will be our largest clinic in the whole county. So in San Rafael, we also have two clinics. One serves primarily OBGYN, women's services, and birthing services, but also some family practice and some children. Our clinic in Larkspur is designed mostly to take referrals from the hospital, Marin General Hospital, whereas Novato takes the referrals from Novato Community Hospital, mostly. The reality is that when patients go to the hospital, they need to eventually get discharged. Many of our patients end up not having a home, not having a primary care doctor, but they may have a new diagnosis of some illness, such as diabetes, that needs care. We also have um, three teen clinics in a variety of settings. Uh, one at the Nevada Wellness Center, soon to become part of our Nevada clinic at, at their request and in a collaboration with them. Another at Huckleberry, which is in the San Rafael High School District neighborhood. And another one soon to start at Redwood Tam Union High School District. So that's not. And we have 22 dental chairs. If you, like me, are shocked at that number, that we could possibly have 22 dental chair needs seven days a week, I might add. Um, it has been an evolution. We only started dental care in 2008. So in those few years, that is the need. And we do work seven days a week and most evenings. So that's kind of the broad brush of how many and who and what. Our patients come from all walks of life. We have people who are documented, people who are undocumented. We don't ask. It's not important. What's important is that they're human beings with health care needs, and that's what we're here to provide. Um, we are fortunately very lucky. We have a fine clinical staff, all board certified, all properly licensed, all with experience, and it's just an amazing amount of um, commitment and caring on the part of our clinicians, our staff, our volunteers, and our donors. We've been very blessed with people who have continuously given us funding to go forward. Um, I would also say that in addition to offering primary care, the average routine medical care, we offer an entire plethora of support services, which include we have behavioral health for people who may be suffering from depression or anxiety or life circumstances and things that really cause people um, mental health, grief. And we have optometry where we have a, a deal with uh, UC Berkeley where they see patients and provide um, glasses for them. On site here? Uh, on one five days a week in Novato and five days a week in San Rafael. Um, Novato uh, has, is the largest clinic. The two buildings together have 37 exam rooms, nine dental chairs, an x-ray suite, and um, a laboratory, and an assortment of support services like diabetes groups, 
we the amount of diabetes in this country has gone wacko and Marin is no exception. So we work to screen for diabetes and to treat it. We also offer heart healthy food hubs in conjunction with the food bank and um, an organization called Extra Food. So those two organizations bring the food. In Thursday, on Thursdays, we do Health Hub in Novato. We serve 320 people last week, and usually it's at least 200. And we do um, Heart Healthy Food Hub in uh, San Rafael on Wednesdays. So uh, what we're trying to teach, of course, is eating well, eating healthy. We don't allow the food bank, etc., to bring anything that looks like sugar. So we try to teach the kids particularly, skip the sweet sodas, skip the things that are gonna A, rot your teeth, and B, uh, be the precursor to diabetes. So we're very proud of that, and we're very um, engaged with the county, with other agencies and other players in making the diabetes program really successful as a prevention. Prevention is frankly the key to all healthcare. You can prevent things a lot better often than you can actually cure them. So if you start on the front end, you're way better off. Um, our adult patients are um, a mix of men and women, many of them young. A lot of our patients are young, but 10% of our patients are Medicare recipients. And we're looking to serve more in the Medicare community because there's a shortage of clinicians in the private sector here, um, all over the country, not just here. And the aging population in Marin is very large. I think we're the oldest chronologically county in the state and one of the oldest, if not the oldest, in the country. So offering services to Medicare patients is a natural. We're able to take outside insurance, private insurance, Medicare, um, health maintenance organizations such as SCAN and Western Medical and, and companies like that. And we're here to serve everyone and, um, and we do. Our focus and our mandate is serving the underserved, underinsured or poor poor residents. People have, without insurance. Right, people without insurance. We have a, a big program called Outreach and Enrollment, which started with the advent of the Affordable Care Act. And in that way, we're able to screen people. Many of them don't become our patients. They, you know, join Kaiser or join something else or whatever. But we feel our role is to help people understand what's available and what they can qualify for and what it's going to cost them. And whether they choose to be our patients or not, it's up to them. You know, no pressure, no, no issues. 80% of our patients are on Medi-Cal, better known in the world as Medicaid, but in California it's Medi-Cal. In conjunction with the Affordable Care Act, Medi-Cal was expanded in the sense that people who are below the federal poverty line, which is at 138% of poverty, qualify for Medi-Cal and therefore can get services, Medi-Cal is their insurance. And um, it's been excellent. People with insurance tend to come for care. People without insurance tend not to because they can't afford it. Many of our patients have multiple health care problems. Many of them have multiple health care problems and multiple life problems, rent, food, jobs, cars, transportation in general. Um, and sometimes it, it's hard to remember all that, that we're, we're talking and working with people who have a multitude of issues and sometimes their health gets the least attention. We're enchanted with the results of our children's programs and especially dentistry. When we began dentistry, and our chief dental officer, Connie Kadera, has been here long enough to see this. You know, um, people, again, if they didn't have the money, they didn't come for care. So little kids would develop cavities at little ages with endless teeth problems going forward. Now, we do a fluoride varnish of the gums at about age six months. And seven years later, 
which is how all the kids are now, they don't have cavities. They don't have any of the things you would expect them to have. Conjunction with that, we do some training of parents. It used to be very popular to just put the baby to bed with a bottle in its mouth. Wrong. <laughs> and we've done a lot of education around that. Also, sweet fruit juice is even worse than milk, but milk is really a bacteria causer it, sitting in the mouth. So we've had tremendous success, and it's just lovely to see the kids and, and um, how much has happened to them and for them. Um, on the teen clinic side, we have the teen clinics outside the clinics so that there's no problem of teen uh, confidentiality. It's a big issue for teens. They want to be able to go talk to somebody about what their um, birth control needs might be or their, or their sexual activity or not or so forth. So we feel really good about that because it, it um, prohibits the teenager from running into his or her mother in the clinic. So that's been very, very good. Optometry is just a knockout. It's like dentistry. The schools evidently knew a lot of kids had visual problems, but there was nowhere to get them seen. So we were fortunate enough to just have two of my staff run into the guy that runs the UC Berkeley Optometry School. He said, oh, wow, do we need places, you know, to see people at and train our residents and this and that. So my two staff came back to me and said, what are we going to do about this? I said, okay, sure, we'll do that. It has been unbelievable. The schools practically kissed our toes for putting this into place because if a child can't see and or doesn't have glasses and or can't afford the glasses, what good is school? You know, they're just going to fall behind. It's not going to work out. So that, that's been really super. We have dietitians. We have physical therapy. I've probably forgotten something, but that is sort of the broad range of what's available. Our behavioral health staff serves both the children and adults. You know, we have a lot of children who've been through quite a bit of trauma. Some have come through border control points where they've gotten separated from parents and end up with, you know, an uncle or somebody here till the parents reunite. And they've gone through a lot of trauma in many cases. And we work to, mi to mitigate and minimize that so they can grow up to be healthy adults. Um, it's, it's an exciting, excellent um, venue, if that's the right world. Marine Community Clinic has a culture that I hope no one ever breaks down. The commitment on the part of the staff and the clinicians and the board of directors and the volunteers and the donors is directed completely toward the care of the patient. People help one another. There's no um, uh, petty work issues. It's all about what can we best do to best serve each and every patient. Um, my name is on the website. I'll get a call or two a week from a patient saying, you know, this was great and this happened and please commend that staff person. Or, you know, I had a little problem. I don't know what to do about it. And I, I personally get involved and make sure it gets worked out. Um, we get, we have a 94% satisfaction rate of people that would recommend our clinic to others, to their families, to their friends, and they do. We have a lot of interest in serving the Medicare population, which comes out in part of aging up and retiring of the existing community physicians. We have very collegial relationships with Marin General with Kaiser Permanente, with Novato Community. We are always in search of specialty physicians because this is an area that we can't really handle. If someone needs a knee replacement, we can't do it. But we have been able to organize the specialists across many lines, chiropractors, acupuncturists, orthopedists, cardiologists, urologists, gastroenterologists to come to the clinic which saves everybody hassle because when, when we make appointments for our patients in one of those physicians' offices, there's a chance the patient won't show up. Mm -hmm. There's a chance that they don't have transportation. There's a chance that they don't speak English. There's all these chances. 
and the physician on the other end is left with an open spot. Da -da. Instead, we're bringing the physicians to the clinic where the patients feel at home. They're not threatened by anything that could go wrong. They don't have to figure out how to navigate, say, the bridge if they're going to UC or, or the parking mm -hmm. or anything else. And it's just divine to see the results. And then if they need surgery, there's an organization in, in several counties called Operation Access. They will do surgical procedures um, pro bono if the patient is a come and go same day surgery patient. If they need in-hospital care, then the three hospitals I mentioned will um, will help us take care of them. So it's it's um, to tell you the truth, I talk to colleagues in other clinics, and um, if I were to complain about anything, I would be a very poor example of commitment to healthcare. We have an excellent organization and fantastic leadership in our not-for-profit board, 51% of whom are patients of the clinic and must be by federal regulation. Could you repeat that? Mm hmm Yeah, sure. 51% of our 15-member board of directors are patients of the clinic. That's a federal requirement. And, um, and it's great. We get instant, on-the-spot feedback we have a system of, we have a committee for which we got a federal best practice called our Patient Perspective Committee, where the patients meet and talk about the things that are of concern to them. Um, are the phone lines too busy? Are we waiting too long? Do we need more of this or less of that? It's, it's an excellent system. And their board members straighten away and they're involved in the financial um, staffing and other decisions that any not-for-profit board makes. So yes, it is. Um, it, it's really an, an excellent system. We have been very fortunate. We have attempted to do the right things for the right reasons at, at no matter what, and thus so far so good. Um, we we are incredibly proud of what's been accomplished at the Novato Clinic in adding to it, because Novato as a city has had the most growth. And um, one of our buildings is named for a, a retired Novato physician, as well as a um, retired gentleman who did not live in Novato, but he wanted to name the one building. So we're looking for um, someone to name the other building or for somebody to name the whole campus, which is how we have it in San Rafael. The campus is named, and then the medical clinic's named, and the dental clinic is named separately. And it's, it's really quite nice. And people ask us, you know, how do you do? What do you do? Where do you get your money? How does it all work? And I'm happy to explain that. Yes, please. So we are what's known as a federally qualified health care center. There are 1,300 of us in the, in the nation, some in very, very poor rural areas, some in very, very rich areas like ours. Um, people are astounded when I say we serve 35,000 patients because they say, what? Because as I mentioned, except for the, the some that are private, most are um, at poverty level. So it's not hard to be at poverty level here if you have you know, a, a um, base wage job or maybe two base wage jobs and try to pay rent you know, transportation, et cetera. So from the federal government, we get on a 40, soon to be $42 million budget, we get a, about $2 million and change from the federal government. It comes with a multitude of requirements in order to meet their rules and regulations. Good requirements, but nevertheless, they need to be implemented. Because of our focus on quality and quality outcomes of care for the patients, we are um, given some grant money that um, helps defer the costs of having a quality team and a staff and the clinicians implementing things. For example, they set the goals every year. You will do X amount of pap smears. You will do X amount of colonoscopies. 
you will do X amount of whatever the goal for that year is. Diabetes testing. You meet those goals and you get some financial reward. And you don't meet them and you get some monies taken away from what you're doing. So quality is absolutely the focus point from prevention through whatever, be it surgery, be it everybody's better and they're just coming for their annual tests, but there's rules. So in, in trying to deal with the rules, that's what we do. And they're good rules because they're good for the patients. And we're moving more and more and more toward fewer visits and more quality focus. And that's a good thing. The patients benefit from that because it's the prevention we talked about earlier happening at the front end, not after they're so sick they can't Prevention. Do right, prevention, right. So um, it's really, it's, it's very exciting. So now we have two million, maybe three million in those two categories, the federal government grant and quality improvement. So now we're down to 39 million. So where do we get the rest of that? We get it because Medi-Cal recognizes that the majority of our patients' health problems are one issue, but the rest of their problems are huge issues. So they give us what's known as better reimbursement for our patient visits than they give to your local in-office doctor. Is that fair? I don't know. But that is the way the system is at the moment. And we're very careful. Um, not to overdo any visits of any kind. We want to see the patients that need to be seen, and we are paid accordingly better than private care doctors. And that helps us be able to balance, because, you know, as you know, most primary care doctors do not offer the services we do. So the way we're able to do that is because we're reimbursed better than other others are. And, um, and we have a wonderful... Uh, philanthropy program. We are blessed with donors who've been with us for years. Some have given us millions of dollars to build the Kerner Clinic. We raised $12 million when we built Kerner. We raised some money when we built Novato. We've had just an excellent community spirit and we, we try to continue to keep people informed. We have our newsletter that um, goes out to mailings. We've been doing some specialized Novato ones, so the Novato residents absolutely get to know about the clinic and its, its viability and availability to all. It used to be kind of a stigma to go to the clinic, you know, make yeah. sure we're poor. No more. I have board members, board members, that are patients of the clinic, and I mean community board members, not those who started as patients, you know. And it's, it's really quite the fascinating process. We are, I uh, consider myself, with the great team that I have, to be a very lucky person to be in this role and, and providing ever-growing and ever-more-needed health care to the community. Quality health care. High quality, quality health care. Yes. And I would like to emphasize that your patients come from all walks of life, all financial levels, um, you require no proof of citizenship or insurance, and everyone is welcome. That is correct. And we're very proud of that. Um, and what it does for the patients is they feel comfortable. Sometimes if they go to other, other big institutions, their first fear often is what is their immigration status and who's going to deport them where and yes. things like that. We, we, none of that. And that word goes down in the community. And so people trust us, and they know that we're looking out for them and, um, you know, that, that we care about them as individuals. And in most cases, we care about them as entire families. I mean, we have the cousins of the second cousins of the third cousins, and it's all great. And at the same time, we have the reasonably well-to-do who choose to come to us because of the quality of care that you mentioned. Excellent. That's so, wonderful. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Very lucky. We, we should all tell more people about this. Everybody should know about this. This is a real treasure for Marin to have. I couldn't agree with you more. And um, as, as we have talked, and I talked to the group of Seroptimists that you're part of, I've talked to uh, two of the three rotaries in Novato. I'm 
I love to talk, as you possibly have already <laughs> detected. So I really, to me, it is telling our story. We do two newsletters a year, big newsletters. And here's our annual report. So if you choose to use that in any way, please feel free. Uh, we give them out. We mail them out. We have an extensive system of um, doing things. We have two events a year, which are um, our summer solstice, which uh, this year is on June 22nd. It's not meant to be a fundraiser. Sometimes we raise a little money. It's meant to be a friend raiser, people that know and hear about the clinic. We usually honor one or two people, generally um, people from the medical world that have really helped us and supported us. Um, and we are honoring in the last two years some young teenagers who've done amazing things on a volunteer level. Well, thank you, Linda. This has been really interesting, really informative. I hope everybody's listened very carefully and we'll put up your websites and your contact information so people can get in touch. Please do. Um, I'd like to thank the Seroptimist crew members, Patricia Hurst, Patricia Hess, Pat Carr, Leon Johnson, our wonderful engineer, the Buck Institute for Research on Aging, which allows us to use the great studio here. And I would like to thank all of you for watching our show. Mm -hmm.